Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to discuss with you the step-by-step -step guideline to read uh, cervical spine MRI. Basically, I just want to walk you guys through how we read um, cervical spine MRI. So basically, first of all, I would like to talk about uh, different sequences. Uh, we have uh, on like different institutions, they might have different protocols, but the essential sequences is usually uh, this sequence, which is a T2 sequence. As you see, the CSF inside the spinal canal is bright, and then there is a fat in the posterior paraspinal soft tissues, which is, which is also bright. So this shows that this is a T2 signal because of the CSF and because of the fat. Also, you see the CSF in the subarachnoid spaces in the posterior fossa. So these all show you that this is a T2 sequence. Then we have this um, common sequence, which is T1. And then the way we know this is T1, because we see this, all these uh, CSF in the spinal canal is dark. And then we see the fat in the posterior parspinal soft tissues is bright. So fat is still bright, but the CSF is going to be dark. And this is the T1 sequence. Next one, which is a very important sequence in uh, spinal imaging, is going to be a stair sequence. So basically, this is the sequence similar to T2, but we have fat drop suppression in order to see the pathology better. So this is the money sequence in each uh, MRI when you read, so you need to do, pay attention to this stair sequence first. So if you look, we have the CSF again in the spinal canal. It's going to be bright, but everything else is going to be fat saturated. So basically, fat in the posterior first one of soft tissues. Yeah, instead of being bright, it's dark now because we fat saturated this, and then uh, then we are going to see pathology uh, a lot easier because then we don't have the brightness of the fat. And then we do some uh, actual sequences, those were sagittal, and then we have these um, actual sequences. Different institutions might do different sequences, but this one is a T2GRE that is just good for differentiation between the disc and um, actual osteophytosis, and also it's very good sequence to look for uh, multiple sclerosis plaques in the spinal cord because it shows the plaques very well, and also it's good for um, trauma and uh, hemorrhage in the cord. So this is just kind of merging T2 and a susceptibility effect together. The other sequence that uh, all institutions should should have is going to be actual T2 sequence. So again, we see the CSF uh, in the spinal canal is going to be bright, and then we have this spinal cord, and then we have the fat, uh, and in the posterior part of spinal soft tissues, it's going to be uh, T2 bright, as you see. Okay, so first of all, we do check to make sure we have all imaging um, like sequences that are necessary for our interpretation, and then next step, we are going to go to actually read these um, uh, sequences to find to find out what is the finding and then what is our impression would be. So first of all, I would like to look at my uh, T2 sequence. So when you look at the uh, sequences, first of all, we look at the alignment, how these vertebral bodies are aligned. So if you have any like um, anterior or posterior malalignment, so basically means one vertebral body goes forward or just um, retropause to the spinal canal, they're just going to mention that. Most of the time, these are going to be degenerative unless we have trauma that we're going to have traumatic malalignment or trauma retropulsion, which is very important in case of um, like high impact injury or fracture, that some of the vertebral body segment just going to retropulse into the spinal canal. For this specific patient, you see that there is some straightening of the cervical spine. Sometimes it's positional, sometimes because they have pain or some muscle spasm. But we just mentioned that there is some uh, like straightening of the cervical spine lower doses. But other than that, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't have very uh, severe anterolysis or retrolysis. Maybe we have some here, uh, two, three, four, five, six, C6, C6, C7 retrolysis. We just do great like different grading are here, but this is just going to be grade one or very minimal retrolysis, which is uh, probably degenerative. When I look at my alignment, the next step, I look at my vertebral body height, make sure that every vertebral body height are maintained. And then uh, you look at the posterior elements, and then you see your spinous processes, and all posterior elements in, uh, will align here. So we don't have any uh, malalignment. Vertebral body heights are maintained. There is no acute fracture. The next, I would like to get, look at the marrow signal. So this is thing we have to look at all sequences to make sure that we have um, like accurate information. So this is the uh, kind of um, normal look or ac basically acceptable look that you have on your T2 vertebral body. You see that the marrow looks like, like this. And then uh, the most important um, sequence to look at the marrow is going to be T1. And then uh, so basically you should have uh, fatty changes in your marrow in the adult patients. So if you have like this uh, vertebral body marrow, you just get dark and you know there's some sort of processes going on. They're like... Uh, might have red marrow reconversion due to anemia, due to like 
like chronic, like oxygen being low in the in the patient for different reasons, or they might have some like uh, underlying infiltrative process, metastasis, something going on. So we have to make sure that we look at our um, uh, vertebral body marrow and different sequences. This is a T1, and then specifically on a STIR sequence, anything that is just like focally getting bright is going to show some sort of abnormal focal lesion. It might have metastasis, or basically they might have some in the in the case of trauma, they might have fracture. So if you have fracture, you're going to see edema in your vertebral bodies in this stair sequence. Okay, so we talked about our vertebral body, so we make sure the uh, alignment is preserved, we make sure that if there is no vertebral body fracture, we, we make sure that there is no uh, uh, matter replacing process going on in the vertebral body. And then uh, next I would like to look at my uh, spinal cord, and look at the uh, spinal cord basically, when I look at my posterior fossa over here, and everything in the image is our responsibility. So basically we look at our posterior fossa, we look at the spinal cord, so this is just uh, the tricky part because we all have a lot of artifact in this uh, um, a spinal canal and as you see here there are some abnormal like signal showing up here but this is just all artifacts so basically we look at our spinal canal we look at our spinal cord there is no epidural collection there is no abnormal cord signal and I make sure I look at every single sequence this line that you guys see is just artifact we are just gonna see it very often and uh, it's a matter of experience to understand what is the actual abnormal cord versus artifacts just gonna be tricky sometimes but to the best of our knowledge, this is just going to be normal core signal here. And there is no epidural collection, there is no cord compression, so everything looks fine so far. And then um, always we have to look at our soft tissues. So if this is a case of trauma, we look at the like ligaments over here. We make sure there is no abnormal edema in the posterior paraspinal soft tissues, in the interspinal, supraspinatus ligaments, or in these areas that we have PLL, ALL, and then ligamentum flavum. So make sure there is no rupture, there is no um, loss of uh, continuity or this dark signal that we see. And then last, I look at my other soft tissues. The most important part is pre-vertebral soft tissue. If you have trauma, you're going to have this, uh, some sort of like rupture of the ligaments and you're going to have some pre-vertebral uh, fluid collection or edema, which is also uh, a science that just tells us there is some sort of uh, ligamentous discontinuity or ligamentous rupture or injury. Okay, and then uh, the other thing that before we go to the levels, we have to make sure look at our vertebral artery flow voids and the actual sequence because this is very important, specifically if you have uh, the case of trauma, we make sure to look at these vertebral artery flow voids and then all other soft tissues like we have parotid glands, we have these submandibular glands, we have this uh, thyroid glands, so we make sure that all these uh, look fine. And this thing basically.